Alright, and welcome back to another playthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Shows. My name is Saiken, and today we're going to start a run called Rookie Balbor. You heard that correct. Uh, that is uh, the Eye of the Tiger returning back to XCOM 2. The rules of this run will be Legendary Iron Man, of course, as always. And uh, we're going to uh, limit ourselves to rookies only throughout the entire playthrough. That means, concretely, rookies will be the only ones that are allowed on missions, rookie will be the only ones that are allowed on covered ops missions, so no quote-unquote using of higher level soldiers to get to those endgame missions or to get to tier 3. We will therefore need to face all three of the Chosens in the final mission if we even make it that far. There are a couple of implications with that. Rookies cannot take PCSs, so we're going to be at a disadvantage with that. Rookies also cannot really take any training as they pro uh, progress, so the training center will only be useful for bonds, and even those are difficult to gain with rookies. Rookies, furthermore, will only be allowed to wear certain weapons, as you are aware. Uh, they will only have the normal assault rifles, meaning we are severely hampered with our equipment choices. So typically, uh, that also means uh, that our ability to upgrade the squad would be limited, but I'll do a little twist in uh, this one and putting that out uh, in up front. There is the option within the game still to train Psy operatives uh, because they do not uh, need to go on missions. Well, they are still banned and they will not uh, go on any single mission. However, their rank accounts for the necessary seniority in order to upgrade the squad. So if we play our cards right, we might end up with a squad of six instead of four rookies only. But other than that, it just comes down to rookies and rookies only. Well, let's see it uh, from the positive side. At least, if our most experienced soldiers dies, we have an easier time replacing them. The only single mod that I'm going to use in that entire run is called Disable All Classes. What it does is, it disables all classes, meaning the only class that is available are rookies. There won't be any rewards, uh, there won't be any mission uh, generated objectives around other classes, so effectively everything's disabled. The one thing that I cannot disable, and uh, I'm pretty sure that there is no mod for that, are the hero classes, so you will see all across the playthrough that uh, we will potentially end up with one or two hero classes, but that shouldn't deter us from completely ignoring them, parking them, and not looking at them at all. Okay. Without further ado, enough waffling, it is time for uh, the ascent of that staircase. You mentioned Rocky 1 or 2, I think it was, where he uh, is running up that staircase in, in terms of training. And we need to do exactly that. Legendary, uh, let's uh, look at additional options. We're not going for better strike. We're not associating with any of the factions. We're definitely going for permanent dark events. Uh, no um, reduction of the avatar problem. Time turner, tur uh, turner will exactly be as uh, normal and we're not using precision explosives as well. So pretty much the hardest setting that the base game would allow you. And with that, we are definitely enabling Iron Man. We are using the integrated content. So all of the alien hunters at least are available and maybe we can use them in order to get some decent armor later because we're not going to get the chosen weapons, but the armor at least is something that we could do. And with that, we are jumping right into the mix. Accessing the feed now. All right, and there we are. Good old Gatecrasher 101. So first things uh, to note is, as mentioned, we're going to start with a faction hero because we disabled the uh, storylining around the factions themselves. Just ignore that uh, uh, that unit for now. We're going to play Gatecrasher with three rookies and three rookies only. Yes, it's going to be a bit more difficult than it normally would, but this is Rookie Balboa, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We got Shinrod here, one of our new uh, characters. Interesting fellow. Uh, he has kind of that voodoo hat on. By the way, in case I did not mention it, all of the new requests for character additions had been granted and you guys now are in the character pool. If you feel like your character should be in this game, 
should be recruited, then now is a great time to note it down and you will eventually be drafted in the next run. This run is closed with, uh, with recruitment as always. And we're just going to park Skythe here and end the turn. These guys make up the bulk of the advent forces we've dealt with. They're disciplined and well Very good. We're going to aim for high ground. I uh, think this comes at no surprise for anyone at this point. Wurtz moves up and takes a good look around. Uh, hello there. He's being followed by the remaining exclamations. And it is a three versus three. I could use, if I wanted to, I could use uh, the Reaper to scout. But I feel that would already give them a purpose in this run. And we said no one uh, who is not a rookie shall be allowed to participate. So that class is disabled for now. We can move even a bit further. Right up to the edge here. Heading to that location. Shinrod moves up as well. Although they bear some resemblance to Okay, well, that clearly assumes we're not going to or that clearly marks the decision that we're not going to attract both of the packs at the same time we are instead going to just overwatch and hope that one of the packs is going to go away hope only gets you so far as i tend to say But what we can do is we can move up here and we would only see those three. Very good. So what I would want to do is Shinrod here takes an overwatch. Wurtz takes an overwatch as well. It's not an optimal decision to overwatch, but given that we have so limited resources, I will frag grenade them. That might kill one of them even. There's a 30% chance on uh, the frag grenades to kill uh, the enemies. And then it is a one shot per overwatch. There we go. Killed one. Come on. Very nice. Wurtz uh, did very well. Killed them right away. Oh boy, nailed they nailed it indeed. That was a very nice start. XCOM gained a couple of uh, points for ambushes. That's good. Reload Overwatch, Overwatch, and reload Overwatch. Let's hope that that other pack might decide to move into us. I'm not going to go down there. We're just going to overwatch for now. Sector moves along here. And there's a chance that they might move into us. Again, chance is relatively low. But I at least want to give it a try with an overwatch trap here. Good to go. Good moving over. Still overwatching. Yep, the sector is here, so that means they move from here to here, which means we can move down. Got it. Hmm. Okay. They did not move. Good. We are moving all the way over here. And let's try to go for that trooper. Half cover high ground is completely negating one another. 70% isn't that bad. 
of a shot. We're going to see likely a reanimation. So I'm wondering, don't want to go closer because the closest pack has been indicated to be here. So that's where the last pack is going to be at. I would instead overwatch, even if that means we're potentially just going to see a reanimation. Ah, Ikes. That is the worst thing that could have happened. Okay, with... Hmm, with that... The only sensible... The only sensible reaction is full retreat. Breaking line of sight. Making sure that our own rookie will not go rogue and start shooting at us. I wish we could go to here, but that is not going to happen. Beat, beat. Good, same deal. We're just going to get out of here. There isn't much we can do against mind control, but this here could serve as a lesson in case you ever get mind controlled, of course, on a non timed mission. And even on a timed mission, it's not the worst idea to to try to break line of sight. Got to deal with this uh, reanimation next. Still got an overwatch. Uh, still got the mind control, and we got an overwatch. Okay, so we don't want the uh, we don't want. The XCOM agent to to run into our Overwatch. We're going to move far, far away dashing. outside of the Overwatch and dashing into cover. The other option would be to wait up here. Can they from down there actually reach us up here? I think the answer is no. Huh. Well, luckily we're dealing with rookie aim. Should have moved around the corner. Good, and we're hunkering down. Okay. Nice. We... Got the rookie back. That is something. That's affirmative. We got high ground. No respite for the dead. And the we got a view on that. on that zombie. Burning through ammo fast. Solid copy. Good, moving up. Oh, I see, I see. I see how it is. Good, so let's think that through. Could we hit him? No, we can't. But that would at least give us a line of sight. Ninety percent shots, unfortunately missed. Let's Overwatch. There is still the option to simply kill the uh, kill the sector. Unfortunately, all of our attempts to hit are not met with a lot of success. This here is now going to be a problem. Luckily, the zombies aren't the fastest. Next turn, though, we gotta be a bit more careful. See? Gate crash already becomes much more interesting if you only use three instead of four soldiers.
moving over into cover and you know what would be a great idea exactly Ah, uh, not so good. We still had falling damage by our uh, by ourselves. That would be a that would have been, on paper, a great idea. In reality, it was a pretty messy idea. <laughs> Seventy percent does not turn out to be successful. There's a chance for high ground here. Hundred percent. <laughs> of course, not enough damage. Okay, we're potentially facing our first casualty here. By the way, the explosion radius was a bit off. Help. Help. Come on. Help. Move in and shoot it and kill this guy. No. <laughs> Uh, so close. Okay, we're going to lose um, boards here. Yep, setting the scene for the entire run. Okay, last shot in the magazine. And that brings us down to two agents. Not great. But it is what it is. That little intermezzo fortunately costed, uh, costed Wurtz her life. Roger that. On the move. In the meantime, let's all move up. Overwatch, and I am curious how we're going to two versus four the last pack. That's not going to be too simple. Locked and loaded. Reloading. Come get some. Come Overwatch, get some. Overwatch. Overwatch. What's making that noise? We would have, of course, a decent advantage if they would be walking into us. Thanks to the explosions, there is a chance that they will... The explosions have 800 uh, range units, which is about until after, until after this uh, pylon here. And they could theoretically start to explore. If they decide to do that, we should have a solid cover upstairs. Give it a few more turns. Get some. Difficult to get them into an Overwatch trap. I'm pretty sure they are standing right there, knowing farewell that we're here. Moving on target location. Aye, aye. Switching our position aye, slightly. Aye. Let's try that again. Come on, I want that Overwatch trap. That'll give us at least Overwatch. four decent shots. Two in Overwatch and two afterwards. And then it is up to a bit of RNGs and good positioning to get those guys down. We're definitely out uh, outnumbered. Question is, are we going to be outmatched? It's by the way not a pack of four, it's a pack of three, but it has a captain in there. Oh, come on, please walk into that overwatch. It's not gonna happen. Done. 
Rookie with a grenade moves forward. This area is hot. And let's Copy continue that. to move. Still retaining the high ground. That's our only chance to deal with the cover other than moving aggressively in. But if you're if you're in the minority, there is only so much you can do with aggressively moving in. Menace one five. X4 module is armed. Neutralize any remaining hostile contacts. You hear that? Okay, they know that we have just planted the C4, which technically forces them to move to us. What was that? Typically when you're uh, finishing the, uh, the mission objective, all of uh, the remaining targets will move towards the mission objective. I'm not sure if gate pressure might be an exception with that, but that's how it typically works in XCOM. Kind of a creation of the developers to ensure that the that there is no hide and seek, which was one of the biggest problems in X in the original Terror from the Deep. Sometimes you were searching for that last uh, pack. Yeah, almost an hour. The maps were huge back in the game and. There was always that one straggler that was literally hiding in the last corner of uh, the last corridor of a randomly created instance. So that of course was not fun. So they decided to let all of the uh, pots basically uh, run uh, to the uh, to the target. Nice. That was what we were looking for. And such a high damage roll on top of it. That could be a grenade kill against uh, the captain. Or, or, we're seeing a straight up kill. Look. A couple, a uh, couple of uh, things. Um, can position ourselves here, right? In full cover. That would make sense. Good copy. Moving on target. We need the good cover now. And that's almost sixty percent, which is as good as it gets. But according to his own, um, to his own records, not even close. This here is a full uh, cover and a good full cover because this is a straight line, um, meaning they would need to run in in order to even reach um, us here. 50-50, still good enough. I'll take the shot. Yep. That's RNGesus now. Come on. Well, we were lucky with killing the uh, captain. That's still full cover. We have no aiming angles. Unfortunately, that is full cover as well. Oh boy. Reload, keeping that momentum. Come on, Russ. That's my boy. Shinrod moves into full cover. And this here may or may not be a kill third of a chance there we go closer than expected we took it uh, to the silver scraping the final uh, the kind of final last uh, quarter last inning of the match but we got it done and that is hopefully setting the scene for a great campaign Lots of kills, lots of casualties, and lots of fun with Rookie Balboa.
Good, so we're not promoting anyone for obvious reasons. So the only things, uh, thing that the rookies gain is uh, memorialization. Uh, she died as she lived as a hero, that's true. <laughs> and uh, maybe uh, with a bit of an uh, inaccurate throw, she very much brought herself into that position. Elarim core, that is good. We can use it later. Advanced hair trigger certainly is good, and the corpses are fine as well. So, let's talk strategy. In this, in this particular game. It is absolutely mandatory that we're going to get our equipment as fast as humanly possible. Like, um, it's much, much more important than in any other uh, run because the one thing that will carry this run is the equipment. Which means in terms of research, I will go for weapon upgrades, I will go for armor upgrades, and that'll be the main thing. Potentially armor upgrades first, because that will allow us to give um, to use even more equipment. Uh, on the other hand, we can't use two grenades. Yet, on the other hand, there is special equipment that we can use in order to increase damage. So it's a bit of a trade-off. I think we're uh, since since our biggest problem is going to be damage at the beginning. We're going to start with. Uh, modular weapons and then take it from there the other option would be uh, alien biotech into uh, into into creating uh, more items so let's see what can we theoretically build uh, we could build Resistance ring, which is mildly resourceful for us. We can build a laboratory, which I am toying with the idea of going straight up lab first. GTS worth uh, nothing for us at the beginning. Training center worth almost nothing. Um, and yeah, I think we're going to go with lab first, which is a completely different strategy than you typically would see. Uh, costs you the entire supplies on legendary as well. But it will offer us, when we pull it off, even faster research. In terms of engineering, uh, we do not yet have uh, the option to use any of our cores, so you're not going to see much uh, there. In terms of building items, of course, flashbangs would be advisable for the beginning. Medkits, potentially not so much. But yeah, flashbang uh, would be helpful. In terms of research, Let's assign some research there. We're going with modular weapons, as indicated initially. Let's take a look at our uh, at our crew. We got Shinrod and Russ here. Both of them have already uh, stood the uh, trial of fire. We got Bastard. He is a new uh, resource as well. Alejandro, welcome. You're drafted. That's good. Sonar. Uh, one of our more senior resources, uh, we got A. Aaron, uh, who is uh, who is going to be one of our newer resources. A uh, viewer has sent him in. Uh, we got a very fresh resource, uh, Wilson, Quinton uh, Wilson. I know that uh, he had been uh, asking to be added. He's Wilson the uh, second, former ex-military. Uh, mm, agent who had uh, royal heritage but landed uh, eventually with axcom taurus who joined us welcome to the team we got hunk back looking smooth as ever and we got uh Baldilox, alan baldelock smith much to my disappointment we did not have inappropriate murphy would have been perfect for this uh for this for this very particular run well we might be getting uh inappropriate murphy a bit later would be great to see his return so yeah that armory i think we're done we don't need to promote anyone not even sure 
how a promotion would look like since I've disabled all of the classes. Am I going to sacrifice a single rookie and make sure that they never can um, be used in this run again to find out what a promotion would look like? Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, guys. I, I want to use uh, the rookies. It would be unfair to Shimrod uh, to sacrifice his character at the beginning of the run. Commander. Don't command me, Bradford, please. Commander, seems like we actually managed to impress the Reapers. Their operative has just provided us the coordinates to their HQ. Now that we're in the area, it may be worth spending some time here. Not to mention meeting their leader, Bulk. We may have chosen a different... My people have thrown off Good. the shackles of aliens. There are new, more rookies, and that's exactly what we want. Three rookies, sign me up. On this run, that means we're getting three free soldiers. It's the best, uh, uh, the best type of soldier that we can get in this entire run. So might as well pick them. Good. Small weapon upgrades are possible now, and we could go for magnetic weapons. I would like to go for alien biotech first. Uh, so uh, 63 days are unreasonable. So alien biotech and hybrid materials would be the next ones. Um, Let's go for alien uh, materials because that opens proving ground and the moment that we do have an engineer we can we can get that started. Oh look at that. We got some really competent soldiers. There are supplies which we also need by the way. But yeah, I mean we just we got Jurangs. Welcome to the team, buddy. We got Diva, an old timer. We got Sane, another old timer. Somehow these old timers always sneak their way into the run. And what happened to you, Roby? You used to be adequately, adequately uh, prepared for this. Okay, much better. How did he end up with those uh, shorts and without the shirt? Avenger plotting new okay, back to supplies. Yeah, the game gives us uh, that as an option because we ended up spending all of our supplies. Commander, as the resistance continues to grow, and we're getting an engineer. Well, that is handy, I would say. Finally, we can use four rookies and don't need to rely on our non-existent sharpshooter. So this will be four rookies against potentially seven aliens. Should be really straightforward. It's going to be in the next run though. If you are as excited as I am about Rookie Balboa, then now is the time to, um, to mention that. Leave a comment down below. To really hype up this run it will have the YouTube algorithm and let me know what your prediction for the run is that's actually really interesting for me how long do you think we will stand the test of time you can write whatever you want uh, in there maybe three four or five months use that as a representation or uh, maybe you uh, mm, uh, you use a certain technology level as a prediction so are we going to fail are we going to do it How's this run going to turn out? Uh, please put your predictions in here and then we will see at the end of the run who was right and who was wrong. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, appreciate your viewership. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.